30 seconds. Three, two, one. You know, Tony, Tony asked me why I was interested in this, and I think it's a couple reasons. One is that I'm always interested in finding out how people fail and how people fail under stressful situations. It's one of the things that makes CrossFit so important. We see movements under the psychology of stress, um, load, metabolic conditioning, and we see kind of default patterning happen when people are in uncomfortable situations. And there is no more potentially uncomfortable situation or psychological stressor than interacting with a human being physically, whether it's fighting or training or sparring or wrestling. It, it initiates such a powerful fear st st stimulus and stressor that it allows you to practice being very uncomfortable. And the next time you have to pick up a heavy load or in competition or uh, you know, have an interaction with someone even uh, verbally, you know, it, it elicits that same response and you're better prepared to handle that. And so if you look at this kind of training as just kind of um, you know, creating a more balanced, complete human being, we get to integrate uh, kind of the, the abilities and capacities of the human, and there is no better way to do that than that physical contact, interaction, sparring, fighting, you know, kind of model. One of the things that we really are a big deal on here at CrossFit and in this community is trying to create super beings. People who know how to interact with their environment. I'm, compare, I'm, I'm ready to lift heavy rocks. I can pick up my kids. I could swim. I could lift a couch. And uh, one of the pieces I think is really missing is this physical interaction with people. And it's one of the most primal ways that we interact. And those of you who teach fighting and teach interaction and teach this know that it goes far beyond self-defense. And self-defense is really kind of the last reason I would say that if you're really interested in kind of being a complete human being and being able to interact with your environment, well, it turns out human beings are the most kind of you know, salient feature of the environment. And the better you are at that physical contact, you learn more about yourself and uh, you can sort of integrate. And it just ends up being the best teaching tool on the planet. Um, you know, not to mention that if you can apply force to someone, it's the same thing as applying force to a moving barbell. And uh, there's so many things to learn about kind of manipulating yourself in the, in the human world. If people did more of this, we would have fewer injuries in the sports. If people trained more, they would be tougher and f fold less in competition. They would be able to have difficult conversations with, with loved ones or with teachers or bosses. I mean, this is the missing piece for human beings. And uh, I think Tony and, and uh, good teachers out there is uh, what this is all about. Tony was showing me some footage of uh, his daughter playing judo and uh, watching her you know, mount a girl, reverse and mount the girl, and then stand up and help her up. That's just a practice response. And what's great about this level of training and these things is that you don't even have to intellectualize it. You just need to do it. And the magic happens as a result of that. So I didn't mean to talk more, but this is so important that uh, I can't believe this isn't part of our physical education the way it was in Greece or the way in other cultures that kids learn to wrestle, they learn to fight, they learn judo as a matter of, of interaction. And there are such few ways that we can touch each other as human beings. Any way in the modern world, it's, you know, it's, this is my dance space, this is your dance space. And this really gives us a context to break down and create physical contact, which strengthens us as people. So this is that important. This is as important as stretching. No, it's not that important.